G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. Uh, if you missed part 6 of the Rotary Table build, there's a link up there, you can go watch that first and come back watch this one. Well, that new camera's finally arrived. It took uh, three or four days once I finally uh, paid for one to get it down here. Uh, had some drama in, uh, in the second one I tried to order. Uh, they spent four days checking the quality control and when I asked him why, he said, oh, well, it's a second-hand one. And I, went, I thought I was ordering a new one. In fact, this one is uh, second-hand as well. And this one isn't the model I wanted. Uh, this one is a G5X Mark II Canon. I was after the G7X Mark II. But anyway, so uh, it's there now and uh, we can get on with making some decent videos again, I hope. So follow me over there to the bench and I'll show you what we're going to do in this video. Alrighty, so uh, I ordered a piece of this uh, inch by 3.8 or 25 by 9.7 as they uh, listed it. And what I intend to do is make some clamps for the top of this table. Not all that dissimilar from what I made here except it won't have these steps in it. I'm going to round the end and in this end of it I'll put a bolt, an adjusting bolt, adjustable bolt, so you can adjust it up and down like that. Um, if you're wondering about what this setup here is, while I was waiting for this camera to arrive, I uh, I made this up. I was thinking about how can I clamp this thing on the table, but uh, to round the ends off. So this is what I've come up with. Um, I'm going to have to make sure I get these slots right or it won't work. Or I'll have to put another hole in the table in one or the other. I'll just bump that damn camera. Anyway, so uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, while I was waiting for everything to show up, I got in and uh, gave these a hit with the uh, fly cutter. And um, I've done all the left one for you guys to see. And it's still a beautiful job as per usual with it. Fabulous. Anyway, so uh, let's head over to the mill and uh, get on with, we'll fly cut that one and we'll set them up. Do all the uh, slots and drilling and tapping for threads and middle all the angles on it like this. Well, I was about to say, you can, as you can see, I fixed the light, but uh, everything just went out. I'll have to check that out. I've got this one I bought a while back, just battery powered. But look at that, beautiful. Absolutely glorious. And you may have noticed it was cutting on the way back just because uh, I haven't retrimmed the head, but for as long as it's cutting like that, I think I'll leave it alone. All right, so we'll get on with, uh, with the rest of it. I did set this up with my edge finder, and I'm pretty confident that I've got the center this time. So uh, the slots and the holes and the threads I put in it will actually be in the centre. When I was doing my maintenance I uh, found a massive amount of uh, play in the Y-axis cube and uh, it's kind of improved the, the finish I get in there now. One now and four to go. Alrighty, so uh, one of my viewers expressed a little bit of delight at me making a drawing the other day, so I thought I'd make his day and do another one. I don't know where you can see that in the video, but that's all the dimensions for it. But we'll get on with this.
Well, that was a bit of a stuff up. I got a bit ahead of myself. I meant to uh, drill a series of holes in there, not just two. And as a consequence of trying to plough that up through there, it's pulled, it's moved the whole thing nearly three quarters of a millimetre, 0.72. So that slot will be a little bit wide, but you know, shit happens. Anyway, I'll get a uh, just a normal end mill in there and clean this slot up. That went a whole lot smoother than the first one did. That's the last one. So uh, I won't bother uh, boring you with the cleaning the edges up with the normal 8 mil, 10 mil. So I'll get that done. Alrighty, and with that, that's all the drilling and slotting and everything done finished so all we've got left to do with these now is put the uh, chamfers or angles on here and round the ends off alrighty that actually went past the line I had scribed on there but it doesn't really matter all I've done to set these up in here is make up a little wooden wedge which is pushed up under here to set the level. A couple of little steps in there, I think I'll just take another point one off the top of that. Anyway, I'll consider that one done. Once again, I just used the same piece of timber and wedged it up underneath there. Alrighty, so the last machining I've got to do to these is to get rid of this mill scale off the side, clean that up. Absolutely fabulous finishes on them. Beautiful. That's why I've gone with the with the fly cutter. So uh once I get all these knocked over, and I'm just going to do one side of each of them, then flip them over and reset it, and then do the other sides. Uh, we'll get this off here, clean it all up, clean everything up. So, mate, it's a hell of a mess. Get the rotary table on there, and we'll round the ends off. At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons. Uh, their support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the bottom in the description. You can join up there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's uh, always buy me a coffee. You toss me a couple of dollars in there. Or there's always that thanks button down there. That's another way you can support this channel. Alrighty, so I have to fess up something. Uh, I've never used a rotary table before, ever. Now, I said I'd explain this setup to you. I, I started thinking, how can I hold this down? and rotate it around to, you know, cut the round on there. So I thought, well, it's got to be pivoting around the centre so I can use this 6mm thread in here to clamp something down. And this this hole has been located exactly, like, equal distance from these three sides. So it should be able to rotate it around there, no problems. So I machined this up out of a, one of those gate hinges I have here. And I keep thinking, oh, yeah, 8mm bolt, so it's 8mm, 6mm drill, yeah, thick enough wall. And then when I was drilling it out, it just broke off because there's nothing left of it. Because inside that hole is 6.7, not 8. But anyway, I'll use this, uh, put that down in the hole. to uh, So it'll it'll shim out the 6mm uh, bolt. Put a big washer on the top of it. Down over there. Now, uh, when I machined it up, I forgot about this recess here. So I'm just going to set a washer on top of there. And each time I put it in, I'll just push it up against this. So it's always, oh, actually that's the, that's the one that, that moved when I was milling it out. So I'm gonna to go to this side. I'll always go to this side. That's, that's what I'll do. Right, 
all you guys that have used rotary tables before can tell me what I'm doing wrong mate. Got all the fans turned off uh, and I'm sweating like a bloody pig here. Alright now I centred I centred the table using my uh, spring loaded tap centre. Just touching that, so I'm going to uh, zero the Z there. Wind it back out a bit. Lock oh, that spindle. All right. Oh, and uh, you may have noticed that the uh, these nylon plugs have arrived. Up. And I'm wishing now that I'd gone to 12 and a half down and out because I'm going to have to cut a little bit off the end of all of these. Anyway, here goes nothing. The uh, let's see if we can't round these ends off. That, my friends, I think is a winner. Pull this away from there. Oh, I cannot believe how much I'm sweating right now. Well, a little bit of dressing up and that'll look uh, pretty damn spiffy, I think. Obviously haven't quite got uh, centred, but we'll figure that one out. I wish, I wish I'd had the forethought to make a test piece, but anyway, uh, we'll sort that out. But it's obviously doing the job. Well, viewers, I think for the first time ever using a uh, rotary table, as you can turn out too bad. I had to dress them up a bit on the on the uh, belt sander, but we'll tidy them up a bit more, clean the edges up, a bit sharp, but. So that's them kind of finished. Uh, I normally cold blue these things, um, but I'm seriously considering hot bluing them. So uh, I might actually hot blue these things, get them red hot and dunk them in a bit of oil. Right, so the last thing to do is uh, make up the screws that go in here. I'm just going to use some cap heads and uh, knock the, the internal hexagon off it so that it's flat. But it's late in the day and I'll do that tomorrow. Alrighty, so I uh, knocked the backs off them as you just saw. Uh, I made two longer ones and two slightly shorter ones. I can always make some more later. I've had a bit of a think about it. I'm going to uh, hot blue these three here. And this one is the one that, that moved. So it's really obvious which one it is. But I'm going to cold blue that one. This is a bit of a test sample. Anyway, we'll get in and we'll hot blue these things. A little bit of go get my oil. Get it ready. Get rid of this for me. Well, that's that. Here's an interesting little anomaly that a uh, few of you might like to ponder. My wife was into me about how much longer I was going to be before we went shopping when I was doing all this this morning. So I just went, oh, stuff it. These things, I'll just stand them in. This, what's in there was uh, some of this Brownells Oxford Blue. So I'll just stand them in there and just have a look when I get back from shopping, see what they look like. Well, in the end, I was about 45 minutes longer before we left. I came out and the two longer ones had turned black. So I just stood and there was a little bit of oil in this lid here, so I just stood them in that oil, went shopping, put these two back in there. Well, because when I looked at them, they hadn't changed at all. Not one little bit. 
Now that one there, it fell over. So it was lying in there on its side. Now some of it's gone black and some of it hasn't. And I noticed that where it was lying in the on the side, it's gone all rusty. Whereas this one was left standing on its end in there, still nothing after more than two hours of standing in there. So what's going on here? Is that one because uh, it had the brownells on it and it was now on its side and open to the air, whereas this one was still submerged in it? Not sure what's going on there. So if you know what it is, let me know. Well, yours, the bluing didn't go well. This is the cold blue one. That is the best for the hot blue ones. As you can see, uh, not great. You can actually scratch it off. I was looking at them uh, when I was heating them up thinking I didn't have them hot enough and couldn't get them any hotter. So I think I'll be cleaning these up and cold blowing them uh, like this one. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's them in the way they're to be used. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you did, uh, make sure you give it a great big thumbs up and smash that like button. Uh, next video I'm going to have something a little different um, for a change. So make sure you come back next week. So that's all we've got time for for this one. This is done and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and bye bye.